Hello, my name is Scott Grizzard from the University of South Florida. Uh, this is Calculus. Um, this is Lecture 1B, uh, The Margarita You Can Never Escape, uh, Limits of Sequences. Normally, this is called The Mountain You Can Never Reach or The Mountain You Can Never Escape, but this is Florida. It's third tallest mountain in Florida is Space Mountain at Disney World. So it's the Margarita. Uh, so let's get him. What we want to do is we want to get this at this idea of a limit. So we're going to start with limits of sequences. Now, it should be noted that in the book, the calculus book that we're using does sequences in Calc 2. It would do sequences in section 8.1 and just go into limits of functions. Now, the, the newer books, especially like the life science book, they actually introduce sequences first and then go into limits of functions. The reason why is because the limit of a sequence is a little bit easier to understand, especially a formal definition of a limit of a sequence. So if we can understand the limit of a sequence and what makes it special, it's very easy to get at the limit of a function, but it's much harder to do the limit of the function first. Okay. Um, one other little thing to note is that this is done, this class is done in reverse historical order, so to speak. So the the idea of an integral was sort of Archimedes, you know, way back, you know, when the Romans were running around. Then, you know, Luton and Leibniz had this idea of the derivative and the fact that the derivative was sort of the inverse into the integral. Um, and in Leibniz had this idea that we're dividing by an infinitesimal. Um, and then Newton basically said, oh, we're just dividing by zero, but not really. And, you know, in the um, 18th, 19th centuries, uh, mathematicians decided that they weren't going to stand for this anymore. Um, and so we have this situation where they've developed this rigorous idea of a limit. So we are starting kind of at the end, which means that we're starting with the idea of a limit. And then we're going to talk about a derivative, and then we're going to talk about the integral, which is a little bit annoying, right? Because we're doing the hardest thing in calculus first. Okay. But from a conceptual point of view. So that's what we're doing. It's the way the books are all lined up. So that's what we're doing here. So what we want to do is we want to talk about um, what do we want from this definition? So we'll, we'll have a couple of these questions and we'll figure out that, you know, it's kind of this, if I get closer and closer and closer and I keep getting closer and closer and closer, but never reach it, is that a limit? Um, and are there, are there some other things we want from a limit? So let's, then that's really the focus of this course of this uh, lecture. What do we want from our definition of a limit? And uh, how can we get those things? So what behaviors do we want and what behaviors do we want to exclude? So recall just real fast that a sequence is a function whose domain is in. And often we will write, we write sequences in different ways. And because it's always the natural numbers, we just kind of list the, the, the Y values in order instead of but you know we this should be the ordered pair technically like this sequence right here should be the ordered pair uh zero maps to one and then one maps to one half and then two maps to one third and so on and so on and so forth but because it's always the natural numbers. We just list the natural numbers in order, 0, 1, 2. We really don't need the whole thing, right? We, all we really need are the y values, the 1, the 1 half, the 1 third, the 1 fourth, etc. So a rational sequence is a sequence whose target, or all of whose members, if you want to think of them as members, all of whose y values are rational numbers. And recall that the rational numbers were just what we thought of as integer fractions, right? So that, um, and just recall here, I didn't leave enough space. Uh, I'll just do it here. Recall that this set, just recall that the set of rational numbers is the ratios of integers, right? P is an integer, and it's P over Q, where P is an integer, and Q is a positive integer. Okay, so an example of a rational sequence is this one I was just doing, 1 over N plus 1. Now, if your book says that 0 is a natural number, then you're doing it this way. If your book says, no, 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 0 is not a natural number, 
you start at one, then of course this formula would be one over n and be the exact same thing, right? It's an infinite list. It, it You've changed nothing if you start at zero or start at one. It really doesn't matter. All right, well, let's look at another one of these rational sequences, okay? This is what we mean by the margarita you can never reach slash never really get away from. Okay, so Bob is sitting on the beach. It's Florida. And every day, he's going to go half the distance to the margarita. Okay? So on the first day, he goes from 0 to 1. Oops. So on the first day, he goes from 0 to 1. And then on the second day, he goes half the remaining distance. And then on day three, he goes another half of the remaining distance and another half of the remaining distance and so on and so forth. Now, does Bob ever reach the margarita? By the way, here are those things, right? On day zero, Bob is at zero. On day one, Bob is at one. On day two, Bob is at one plus one half. On day three, he's at one plus one half plus one fourth. On day four, he's at one plus one half plus one fourth plus one eighth. On day five, he's at blah, 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 plus one sixteenth. On day six, he goes another one, one over 32. And, you know, again, the next day on day seven, he would add another one over 64, at one, one over 128 the following day, and so on and so on and so forth. Now, does Bob ever reach the margarita, which is sitting here at two? And that's sort of a silly question, right? I mean, you just, no, he goes on forever doing half the remaining distance. But does Bob ever reach, does Bob ever get close enough to drink the margarita? And that's a different issue. Does he get practically, no matter, you know, at some point when I start moving Bob in here, closer and closer to the margarita, he's touching the margarita. Even though he's not on top of the margarita, he's, you know, getting on top of the margarita. So does he at some point get close enough to drink the margarita for all practical intents and purposes? And the answer to that is, what do we mean by that? So what I mean by that is, if I had any arbitrary positive distance away from the margarita, Right? So this is some arbitrary distance away. Would there be a day that Bob gets that close to the margarita? Okay? So, for instance, if I said, is there a day when Bob is 0 0.1 away. So that would mean Bob reached 1.9. Is there a day when he reaches 9.9? Yes. Day five. Is there a day when he's going to be 0 0.01 away? How about a day where he is 0 0.001 away? And the answer to all of these questions is yes. At some day, we don't know when, or actually we do know when, we can compute it, but no matter how far away I say is close enough to drink the margarita, there will be a day when Bob reaches that. By the way, the formula for day in here would be 1 plus... Uh, one half plus one fourth plus blah, 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 plus one over two to the n. Um, and you're going to want to remember this. So that's the this formula, Sn equals the sum is from k equals zero to n of two to the negative n. And you're going to see this again. This is called the geometric series. Um, and by the way, you will see it again in Calc 2. So again, what do we mean by close enough? Okay, for any close enough, is there a day when Bob is close enough? Okay, so what we're going to do is say, okay, when Bob, we're gonna put a pair of pop tops right here next to the margarita, and we're gonna say Bob is close enough when he steps on the pop top and cuts his heel and has to cruise on back home. 
at any day, no matter where I put those pop tops, as long as they are a positive distance away from the margarita, there will come a day when Bob is inside the pop tops. Okay. And we're going to call that close enough. Okay. There are my pop tops, and there will be a day when Bob is close enough to step on the pop top. So we're just going to call that close enough. And it's arbitrary. Okay. So that's the first thing I want out of my definition. Okay. I want to be able to say, I want. We'll just write over here. Desire. Okay. So number one, we want to capture this property. Okay. So we want to say, there will be a day when we get close enough. For... Okay. So we want there to be a day when we are close enough for any distance, right? So to go back to our example here, I could make this 0 0.000001. And there is a day when we are close enough to the margarita to be inside 0 0.001. So that's the first behavior I want. I want to be able to get arbitrarily close. Okay. So I want there, I want so we are going to say the limit as n goes to infinity sn equals l. What do we want from this? We want there to be a day when we are close enough for any arbitrary. In other words, for any we can get close enough for any definition of close enough. Okay. So if we look at this, if we go over here and we actually graph this sequence, you can see here I've graphed the sequence. I've called it a n over here. I should probably teach it, change it over here. But this is that sequence. We're adding half the distance. We're adding uh, 1 over 2 to the k every day as we go along. So there we are at day 4, 1.9375. And you can see this getting closer and closer and closer and closer to 2 as we move on. Okay. At some point, indeed, this thing's going to round off to two, even though you're not quite there. Okay. So, and it's very quickly, right? Within within ten days, we're already at one point nine nine nine. So, if you're if you're close enough was zero point zero zero two, you're there. Okay. So that's the first concept. We want close. We want this to capture close enough. All right. The question is, what about, do we, do we want to allow the limit to be reached? Okay. So we've got this idea where we're never quite reaching to, but we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. Do we want to allow us to actually reach to? Okay, so let's consider this sequence. So consider this sequence. It's just Tn equals 2. So as a list, right, this is going to be T0 equals 2. Remember, it's a function, and this is a constant function. T1 equals 2. T2 equals 2. T3 equals 2. T4 equals 2. T5 equals 2. T637 equals 2. Right? So this long list of 2s, I would kind of like to say that this has a limit. If I was going to give it a limit, what would it be? Well, let's go back to our arbitrary closeness thing. If we have Tn equals 2, 
okay, or DN on this on this side. Um, note that Desmos requires me to put n times zero in here. Um, if I have DN equals two, this is two, 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 two. Is it true that there is a day when I am arbitrarily close to two, no matter how, no matter what you define as arbitrarily close? So if I say 0 0.001 away from 2, is there a day when Bob is standing on the margarita? Is Bob close enough to drink the margarita? And the answer is, yeah, he's standing on it from day one, right? From day zero. He's standing on the margarita. You know, he's 2, 2, 2. So is he, arbitra is he close enough to drink the margarita? Yeah, he's on it. So I, I want this to have that limit. I want the limit of this to equal two. So if I do two, 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 I want that to be okay. So I want the limit of TN, it was DN on the other one, to equal two. Right? If I do two, 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 I want that to be two. Okay. So the second thing I want out of my limit, my desires for my limit, is that it is okay, but not necessary for Bob to actually reach the margarita. Okay? It's okay, but not necessary. Okay, what else do I want from my thing? So we've looked at one that kind of the classic thing that we think of when we think of limits, we've had one that goes, do, 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 do. we've had one that kind of approaches the two, and then we've had one that's just standing on the two. Well, what about something like this? What about something like this? Let's even change it. Let's make it negative one to the n plus one. Okay. So what's going on here? Well, here I'm standing on the margarita. Bob is standing on the margarita, but here Bob isn't. Here Bob is standing on the margarita again, but here Bob isn't. Here Bob is standing on the margarita again, and here Bob isn't. Now, compare that to my classic case where we were approaching and getting closer and closer and closer to the margarita, right? Here, in the, in the green, in this case, after I get close enough, I stay close enough forever, right? There's only a finite number of days when Bob is not enjoying his margarita, okay? If you say close enough is right here, then there's only five days when Bob can't enjoy his margarita, and then he enjoys his margarita forever. Here, there were no days that Bob was not enjoying his margarita. He was standing on the margarita, and no matter how close you demanded it be, positive distance away, he was always going to enjoy his margarita. Right? So there's still a finite number of days where he's not enjoying his margarita. But look at this one. Here, he gets his margarita, but then it gets taken away from him. He gets it back, but then it gets taken away from him. But then he gets it back, but then it gets taken away from him. This is just a sad story. There are an infinite number of days when his margarita gets taken away from him. And that's just wrong, right? You, you should be able to enjoy your margarita forever. So we're going to say this doesn't have a limit. Because if we said it did, how would we even choose, right? One of them's two and one of them's zero. So what we're going to say is that not only is there a day when we're within that distance, there's a day after that, so that for every day thereafter, we are within that distance. Okay? Another way to say this is that we settle. Right? It settles. Now, this other sequence here did not settle. Right? This does not settle. But let's look at a different one. Let's look at CN here. Here I have a sequence. Let's make it CN. Let's make CN go to the margarita as well. 
Okay, here I have a sequence where I'm jumping around as well. Plus one on the bottom. Okay, here I have a sequence where I'm jumping around as well. I start at three, and then I come back to 1.5, and then I come up here, and then I come 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 here. This is an area where we want the limit to happen. Okay? So this particular, so we had the one where we were standing on the limit. To, 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 to. And now we've got one where we're jumping between both sides of the limit, but we're getting closer and closer and closer to our, our goal. And that's okay. We want the limit of this sequence here to equal two. Now, let's look at another one. What about this one? This one's going to do something interesting. Here, we're going to start on the margarita. And then we're going to go away from the margarita. This is sad. But then we go back to the margarita. But then we go away from the margarita. But then we go back to the margarita. But then we go away from the margarita. But notice how this is different. This one, we're not jumping away forever. Look what, what happens. We move away from the margarita again, but for any arbitrary distance away, right? For any arbitrary little distance away from this two. Okay. I will eventually stay within that. Right? If I have 0.1 as my distance, look at what happens here. By this point, Right by day 14, I will never be farther away than point one from the margarita. Okay, I'll always forever be within point one of the margarita. And if that's close enough to drink the margarita, then I forever get to drink the margarita. Right, I get to enjoy my margarita forever, even though I'm moving slightly away from it because you know I'm swaying, I'm enjoying my margarita forever, so I'm going to sway a little bit. But I never sway farther than the point one needed to drink my margarita. Okay, so that's the idea, and I want this behavior to be okay. All right. So that was what we've seen. We've seen some things that are okay, and some things that are not okay. We don't want to leave forever. We want to settle on a number. We want to be able to drink our margarita forever. We don't want to always go away from it. Okay. So those are the three things here that we want to make sure our limit has, okay? For any distance away from L, there's a day with more than that distance. It's okay, but not necessary for the sequence to reach L. And there's a day that so, there's a day so that for every day thereafter, we are in the distance. And this right here is the key to our definition. All right. So let's formally define this. Okay. We have what we want. So let's actually do the formal definition. Here it is. Now, don't blame me for the words here. This is what we want. There is a day so that for every day thereafter, we are, with, we are drinking the margarita. We're in the necessary distance to drink the margarita. So here's how we're going to say this. Definition. Okay, so this right here is what's called an epsilon. Well, the Greek character epsilon. And I don't have a choice whether or not to use that, okay? This is for any epsilon, but don't read that as any epsilon. Remember, for any distance greater than zero. Why can't I use delta? Well, because delta is used in a different way. So you're stuck with epsilon because that's what Koshi wanted. This says there exists a natural number in, or there exists a day... For any day after our special day, so there exists a special day, so that for any n thereafter, for every day thereafter, there exists a day so that for any day thereafter, Bob 
is close enough to drink the margarita. Okay, this says that this SN is in the set L minus Epsilon L plus Epsilon. The way to remember this is just to remember the metaphor, and I'm telling you it works, okay? So here's the metaphor. For any distance, or I should say for any close enough, for any distance greater than zero, there exists a day so that for every day thereafter, Bob is close enough to the margarita. Okay, so here's the margarita. Right, and here, right here, is this distance epsilon. So this is L, and here is this distance epsilon. That's the distance away. So here's my number line. There's L, there's L minus epsilon, there's L plus epsilon. little cleanup so for any debt for for any arbitrary distance away from the margarita okay for any close enough there exists a day so that for every day thereafter bob is close enough for the margarita okay and that's the idea and compare that right here right for any day for any close enough there exists a day so that Bob, so that for every day thereafter, Bob is close enough to the margarita. Okay, so let's do another example. Uh, let's show that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, forget about the n equals 0 bit, we're just going to discard it. Show that this limit, if I go 1 over n forever, starting from 1, I'm going to get a limit of 0. Why? Okay, well, let's look at it. If I plot this here, you can see that for any arbitrary positive distance, there's a day so that for every day thereafter, I'm within that arbitrary distance away from 0. So let's say that I let uh, epsilon equal point, what is that, point 0.2, okay? So if epsilon equals point 0.2, is there a day when I'm between, when I'm, where for every day thereafter, I am less than point 0.2 away from zero? And the answer is yes, four, five, six, ten, all of those will work for my big N. Now, if you want to formally prove one of these, uh, we don't really, but I'll do this one because it's the famous one, okay? The way that I would do this is I say, okay, let epsilon be some arbitrary distance away from zero. Because remember, we have to show that for any epsilon, for any close enough. So I'm saying, okay, you tell me what close enough is. If what you said close enough was, was greater than one, then I'm just gonna let big N equal two, right? Because, you know, one half, one third, one fourth, they're all going to be less than one. Right? And you said that epsilon, your pick, was greater than or equal to 1. So I'm done if I just pick n equals 2. Well, suppose you didn't say that. Suppose you gave me something like 0 0.001. Or one. Okay? You throw a lot of zeros in front of that. I'm going to say, okay, if epsilon's less than 1, that means 1 over epsilon is greater than 1. Okay? So I have this number that's bigger than one. You told me, you know, uh, epsilon was less than one. That means one over epsilon is greater than one, right? Because one third, if you gave me one third, that means one over one third, which is three, is greater than one. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the next natural number greater than one over epsilon, because you could have given me one over pi, right? If you give me one over pi, I'm gonna pick four. 
that means that whatever you gave me, if I like, if you gave me four, if 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 you gave me pi, and I said one over pi, right? The next biggest integer from I'm sorry, if you gave me one over pi, one over one over pi is pi, which would give me four. So I'll just put the write that down. One over one over pi, which equals pi. So n is the next biggest one. N equals four. Okay. Then that means that one over four is less than one over pi because four is bigger than pi. Right? So that means one over four is less than one over pi. All right. And forever, for any n greater than four, one over n is going to be less than one over pi. Okay. So that's how you prove these things. You 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 say, okay, you give me an arbitrary distance, I let you pick the distance, and then I give you a formula that gives me back. So if you're interested in proving them, that's how you do it. Let's look at another situation. This is one where we have limits going to infinity. So here, what we had were limits going to real numbers. This one was zero. Up above, we had one that was two. And these sequences all went to, you know, nice finite number, not, you know, nice numbers. What about to infinity? Well, let's just give the definition. We're gonna say that the limit as n goes to infinity of some sequence Tn, equals infinity if for any integer alpha there exists some natural number n so that for all n greater than n sn is greater than alpha okay so there's this idea that no matter what you pick i'm going to keep going up really that's the way you need to think of it no matter what you pick i keep going up No matter what you pick, I will pass it and stay past it. Okay, so let's give some examples. Tn equals n. So in this case, rather simple example, I'm just going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is never going to stop, right? You pick any number and I'm going to go past this number and stay past it. Now, there's one that we want to exclude and that's this kind of oscillating thing. So if instead I had n times negative 1 to the n, right, I would go 0, negative 1, 2, negative 3, 4, negative 5, 6, negative seven, you'd see that, the, that forever, you know, that I'm going to be diverging in two different directions. And I don't want that to happen, right? Because here I don't stay gone. I don't stay above. I then go below and then go above, but I go below an infinite number of times. So that's the same idea. It's just now we're doing infinity, okay? Likewise, for negative infinity, the, def the definition is exactly the same, except that I would pick a neg uh, negative sign there. Uh, I'm sorry, a less than sign there. Right? I would just, if I wanted negative infinity, that would just be less than. Let's have our first big theorem of the class, okay? This is how we compute a bunch of these, and it's kind of slick. This is nothing else matters, the sequence addition. This is always a fan favorite. Let's suppose n is going to infinity. Um, with sequences, it always is. Um, but the reason I put this in here with a big highlight is because um, when we do 
functions, it's important to note that we are only interested in things that are going to infinity or negative infinity. So I'm just doing when we do real functions. So right now I'm just talking about sequences. So n is going to infinity. And let s be a ratio of two polynomial-ish things. Basically, I want constants times x to powers. Right? These are constants times x to powers over some constant times x to power. If that's the case, only the terms with the highest power on both of the top and the bottom matter. Nothing else matters. I don't sit here and have to do a whole bunch of messing with this. So let's look at this one. Let's look at 2n plus, I wanted this to be plus. This is 2n. So if I've got 2n plus 1 over n plus 5, let's not do 2, let's do 5. Let's go bigger. Okay. When I'm talking about S1, S2, S4, S4, S5, S6, those ends, that this 5 and this 1 will make a difference. But when I go to infinity, does that 5 make any difference whatsoever? I mean, it's going to get drawn up when n is 2,000. Is there a difference between 4,001 divided by 2,005 versus just 4,000 over 2,000? There's a little, but when I go to a million, does adding one on the top and adding one, five on the bottom actually make a difference? And the answer is no. This is infinity you're talking about. Infinity laughs at you. You million, you billion, you trillion, you U.S. national debt. Infinity laughs at you. Okay? So what's going to happen here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to write limit as n goes to infinity of 2n plus 1 over n plus 5. Then over my equal sign, I'm going to write NEM for nothing else matters. Now I'm stating the theorem that justifies why I can do this. And nothing else matters. And then I'm going to pick the terms with the highest exponents, the exponent 1 and 1 in this case. So I'm 2n over n. I cancel the 2s. I'm sorry. I cancel the n's, and I wind up with 2 as my limit. And if we look at the, the graph of this, you'll see that it doesn't, if I change this thing on the bottom, right? Here it is, and it's going to 2. Now, if I change this thing on the bottom to 100, Okay, it's going to go up to two much more slowly, but I can zoom out enough. Um, this way. To see that it's going to two. It just takes longer to get there. Likewise, if I throw a six on top of this, or a 600 on top of that, sure, it flips up here. Oh, and 600. But because, you know, 600 dominates this thing. But look what happens as I go off to infinity. I'm still heading to 2. It doesn't matter. This, this, whatever these numbers are, they just don't matter. Okay? In face of n. Let's do another example. Here's another example. I want the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n squared plus 6n plus 1 over n squared minus 25. Notice here that at 5, this thing is not defined, but we don't really care. Because we're going bigger than 5, right? This is going off to infinity. 5 is way down there. So who cares? Now, this 25, this n, right? When I'm at a million, a million squared compared to 1 million. Two times a million squared compared with 6 million. Uh, right? These terms don't matter. I'm just going to write nothing else matters. I'm going to and nothing else matters. matters. I'm going to put 2 n squared over n squared. Cancel, cancel. The limit is 2. Now, let's do another example, one where the limit goes off to infinity. Let's, let's do a couple more examples here. Here's another finite example. Let's say I'm taking the limit as n goes to infinity of the square root of x plus the cube root of x over 2 times the square root of x. Well, I convert this to power form, right? So these go to the square root becomes x to the one half. This becomes x to the one third. This becomes 2x to the one half, uh, one half. And then I apply nothing else matters. Well, one third is less than one half. 
So it goes away, and I'm left with x to the one half over two times x to the one half. And nothing else matters. Which the x to the one halves cancel, I'm left with one over two. Okay, let's do another example. The limit as n goes to infinity of x cubed plus the cube root of x plus 60 over 10x to the fourth. Okay, only the top two terms matter. So this right here is x to the one third. One third is definitely less than three. Okay. So I'm going to have instead the limit as n goes to infinity of x cubed over 10x to the fourth, which equals, which equals the x to the fourth and x to the cube do a little canceling here. And I'm left with x, I'm left with 1 over 10x. And this is going to go to 0. Okay, one more example. If I've got the limit as n goes to infinity of the fourth root of x to the fifth plus 10x plus 5 over uh, 100 x plus the square root of x plus 16. I'm going to go ahead and do nothing else. Matt. Well, first I'm going to convert it to power form. So this right here becomes x to the 5 fourths plus 10x plus 5. The bottom will become 100x plus x to the 1 half plus 16. 5 fourths is, is, is bigger than 1, so this term doesn't matter, and that term doesn't matter. This term matters because it's the biggest one on the bottom. That term doesn't matter, and that term doesn't matter. So I wind up with x to the 5 over 4 over 100x. And nothing else matters. Um, there should be limit signs here. I always forget the limits, too. You will lose points if you forget the limits, so don't forget the limits. Oops, that did not work. Okay. And that right there, the 5 force and the 1, that's going to cancel. That's going to give me the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the 1 fourth over 100, and that equals infinity. That's going to shoot off forever. Okay, so that is nothing else matters. I take the only terms that matter are the ones with the biggest power. And nothing else matters. So that's how you can quickly solve some of these. And we'll see nothing else matters again when we talk about functions as they go to infinity. But remember, we only want things that go to infinity. Finally, let's talk about the real numbers. So recall my definition of the rational numbers from last time. It's P over Q such that P is an integer and Q is a positive integer. So, you know, one equaled one over one. So that was a rational number. One half, negative one half, of course. Zero was zero over one, etc. Pi was not. Recall that pi is not a rational number. Neither is E, by the way. Okay. And recall again that a rational sequence is a function, is a sequence whose uh, target is Q, or whose target is the rational numbers, or just a function from the natural numbers to the rational numbers. R, the real numbers, is going to be all L's such that L is neither positive nor negative infinity, and there exists some rational sequence T such that the limit as N goes to infinity of TN equals L. So in other words, we're going to take in, we're going to take all of the uh, sequences of rational numbers, 
these infinite lists of rational numbers, and we're going to toss in their limit points. Okay? So zero is a real number, right? Because it's the limit. So one over n is a, rash, is a rational sequence. And the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n equals 0. E is a real number. Okay? Its formula is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. By the way, this right here, um, you're going to want for calc 2. That's a nice little sequence. Um, so you can do a couple, you can do a lot of stuff with those types of formulas. 16 is a real number because the limit as n goes to infinity of 16 over 1, which is the constant se uh, sequence 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16 well, that equals 16, right? Because 16 over 1 is a rational number. So the limit of that sequence is just 16. Pi is a real number. There are a couple ways to see this. So look at the sequence 3, 3.1, 3 3.14, 3 3.141, 3.1413, 3 3.1417. That is a sequence. Each one of these is a rational number. This is a sequence who, if I keep adding on digits to pi, eventually, right, it, it'll never repeat. I'll never actually end, but the limit of that sequence is pi. If that's not satisfying you, there's another one here. This is called the Leibniz uh, Madhava uh, sequence. And it says that pi equals the sum as k uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of this summation formula. k equals 0 n 4 over 2k plus 1 times negative 1 to the k. So I've got 4 minus 4 over 3 plus 4 over 5 minus 4 over 7 plus 4 over 9. His actual, um, his actual statement, Leibniz's statement for this, was actually that pi over 4 equaled 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7 plus 1 over 9, dot, 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 dot. Um, so that's it. So he didn't have the four on top. That's if you want to get to pi, you have to multiply the whole sequence by four. Okay. So that's it for today. What we did today was we went over, uh, we went over, um, the margarita you can never escape and limits of sequences. Um, we talked about, you know, these key questions here. I didn't do the arbitrarily close to functions uh, R to R. We'll do that. Um, we did that in peer leading on Friday. Um, and we'll talk about that some more tomorrow. And we defined, we, we defined what are, that we had these three big things that meant that we had a limit, that we wanted to satisfy. We wanted for any distance away from L, there is a day that we are within that distance. It's okay, but not necessary for us to actually reach L. We don't have to. We just have to get arbitrarily close. And there is a day so that for every day thereafter, we are within that distance. In other words, the sequence settles on a particular L. Okay? And so we had this, um, we had this uh, formal definition. But again, the, the key to this is not this formal definition. That's not as important as this third criteria. There is a day so that for every day thereafter, we are within an arbitrary dis that arbitrary distance. Okay, uh, that's it for this lecture. I'll see you next time. No, nothing else matters.